What's up? It's Benny. We're doing Let's Make a Board Game. We are back with our um, extra fun, extra fancy Safe and Hound. I think when you guys saw this in the last video, the mountain was uh, facing the other direction. And there's a very important reason for the mountain to be facing this direction versus the other direction. I noticed when I was playtesting it, and I noticed when we were doing the last video, that the um, when you get to the top, it really, there is no player agency. So in this form, if you flip the mountain over and you're the mountain dogs going from the top of the mountain back down to safety, I don't know, it works in my head, it's fine, it's good. Um, you have more player agency. You have less player agency at the start, but then as you start to clear the cards, you end up with actually a lot more player agency, which is a really very, uh, very positive thing. This is something that good developers will pick up on usually pretty quickly. Um, I think we talked about my good friend, the mayor of Unpub, Mr. Ben Beagle. He's a great developer. Um, Derek Dooley, my buddy, of course, he's, you know, another great developer. They're guys who would have seen it maybe the first time if I hadn't gone, <laughs> if I hadn't gone it. It'd been like, dude, flip the mountain over. Huh? I'm like, what? are you talking about? But, so, the mountain is flipped over. Not bad. Um, the goals all have scoring values now. Dun, dun, dun. I went through and updated some values, some different things like that. Um, the next step, really, for this game is to probably make it pretty. Um, throw it on the computer, get it cleaned up, get our poor little injured people together, get some nice art for for our barrels. Um, the picks are going to change in the sleds because that theme feels more thematic for dogs than it, you know, because you're not a people doing rescue. You're a, you're a St. Bernard. So I just wanted to jump this back out here, show you guys what it's, what the developmental change was and um, talk to you about why. So that's one of those things that I think when we design board games, we get very um, it's a term I hear in music all the time, demo-itis, but I think we get into prototype-itis when we're designing, and I think we get too much in our own way, and um, sometimes you have to take a step back, and so this is a game, obviously, I took that big, really big step back from, and, you know, worked on some other projects, and um, this is where it's at right now, I'm happy with it, I like where the scoring's at, I've played it Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how many times since the last video it's been. Today's technically Monday, so it's been not that many days. Um, but I've played it a whole bunch. And I like it. I like where it is. And so now the next task is to make it pretty. Um, so, the part that I wanted you guys to see is that player agency is really important. And sometimes it's not something you see when you're initially playing it, but you might pick it up. And you're playtesting. So playtesting, very, very, very important. And I noticed that for myself when I'm doing a prototype and designing games and all this kind of stuff. I, I get really invested at the beginning or really invested in the middle. When I have to prototype, my investment level drops. Or my, when I have to playtest, my investment level drops pretty significantly. But I think it's like it's an element of finishing. You know, you finish that leg of the race by, you know, playtesting it into oblivion or playtesting it until it feels not 100% balanced because it's 100% balanced and it's just a math problem and, you know, players may or may not enjoy that. We had a game, my wife and I, we were playing the other day um, that just was not enjoyable. It made sense, it worked, but the the enjoyment wasn't there. And that's that's a really hard thing to pin down in board games. So I hope that this game comes across as enjoyable. I think one of the ways we do that is, you know, some really clever art. I think we use some, you know, really nice iconography. Um, you know, when you guys see this game next, it's going to be really drastically different looking game. Um, you know, our, it's not going to be stick figures or scribbled or handwritten. It'll all be, you know clean and neat and functional um the trees will, will actually have trees it won't just say 
tree type. And the barrels will look like actual, I mean, they look like barrels now. The ropes will be more rope-like and the picks will be sleds and the time will be, you know, a, a nice uh, stopwatch. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do for that yet, but I'll, I'll draw something up. Um, anyway, this game has reached the end of its uh, development cycle. Um, and that's kind of a sad thing for me because I really like where this game is. It's, it's not sad because of that, but it's sad because I, I don't have to tinker with it anymore. My tinkering is done. It's good. It's a good game. It plays well. It's, it's snappy. It's, it's a fun little um, two-player 18-card game. It does exactly what it sets out to do. You know, it's got a, a good amount of player agency now. Of course, now, you know. Um, but it's done. And now I have to make it pretty. Which is a whole new separate project in itself. And you guys, you know, if you're if you're like me, if you design and you publish and you do art and you do all this other stuff, um, you kind of find that there's there's a two project thing that happens with board games, right? You design a board game. Design a board game. Then the next project, so this project has ended. It's it's developed, it's where it needs to be. The next project now becomes um Making it look good, so I have to shift my brain into art, art brain mode and graphic design mode, and make everything look pretty mode. And that's yeah, that's a it's a good thing. I'm happy in the end. I'm happy that it came together, and I'm happy that I had that weird thought that I shared with y'all on the last go round with this game, where it was like I just kind of got it, and then it was like. What about a mountain of cards? And yeah, okay, still, still a mountain of cards. It's just the orientation is different because you're coming from the top of the mountain down because you've got to rescue the people at the top of the mountain first before you can rescue people at the bottom of the mountain. These people are in more desperate need of a, a St. Bernard to come save them as opposed to our less, less needy people down here. Anyhow, thank you guys for checking out uh, let's make a board game. This is uh, actually been a lot of fun. This this video, I you know, I'm having fun with this. You guys, you guys are a lot of fun. I appreciate you. If y'all have any ideas for the next board game we should work on, um, there's a comment section. You guys can can comment if you want to, and that would be cool. Maybe we can jump from one of those ideas into something. Um, but I do I do appreciate you all. I uh, appreciate y'all checking this one out um yeah and that's that's it this is it for safe and how the next time you guys see this well it'll be pretty it'll be um, an 18 card pretty game in a hook box i'll figure out how to make those game crafter has templates um and then from there you probably see it on the kickstarter i don't know when <laughs> doing art is hard Sometimes it's time consuming. Um, and with 18 unique cards, you know, it's gonna it's gonna take some time. But I'll get it there and then on um, maybe I'll include a link when it's ready to these videos so you guys can check it out when it's done. Um, of course encourage you to keep designing, keep making, keep having adventures in board games right let's make a board game we hey look we did it we made we achieved the goal we started with an idea we ran it through a development cycle it changed drastically into a different game we developed it further and we made we did it we made a board game we achieved the goal so now we should change the channel into let's make two board games no i'm just kidding um I appreciate you guys. I hope you hope you enjoy checking out these videos. I will. Uh, there will be more of these videos. Of course, we're gonna we're gonna do more. I've got more games that I I need to play test and develop, and I'm sure I'll design something else. And if you guys have ideas for designs, feel free to drop them down here. And you know, if we get some cool ideas together, yeah, absolutely, we'll we'll get something going. Um, I think maybe our next one is gonna be called Hidden Gems. It's um, I have ideas for it. It'll be a card game, so card based like these. 
Um, and each time you play a card, you cover up gems on a previous card. So each, each card will have like three gems. I don't know. I won't go too far into it. It's kind of a, uh, it's in my head. It's an idea. Um, but that'll probably be the next video of me showing you guys that design unless somebody has a really cool idea that, you know, really sticks out in my brain and makes me want to jump all over that. And I'm sure you guys have some cool ideas. So if you do, please, of course, drop them in the comment box below. Thank you again for checking out Let's Make a Board Game. If you like this kind of uh, nonsense, feel free to uh, subscribe, all that good stuff, right? Follow along, ring that little bell, right? All the things that they tell you to do in videos. But I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for checking it out.